Okay, so um, welcome to the ESLO Awards session. We are gonna honor some of our um, most uh, distinguished and uh, people with great potential to be future distinguished ESLO members. So I wanna introduce Peter Levitt, who is the um, chair of the awards committee. It's a committee that is an enormous amount of work, so we all owe Peter a great debt for doing such a, a conscientious job of uh, shepherding us through the award process every year. Peter? Thanks very much, Debbie. Uh, thanks very much for coming to the award session. Um, ASLO spends an enormous amount of time doing really great science that transforms the world, educates people, and trains the next generation of scientists. Um, we're often so, so absorbed in, in what we're doing, we forget to honor our colleagues for their achievements. And so this session and just the awards program in general is designed to, to rectify that, to actually say to our, our colleagues, we value what you're doing. You're, you're doing a fantastic job and we really admire you. Um, each year there's 150 uh, people involved in the nominations process, generating several hundred nominations. Um, excuse me while I drop my notes. Uh, that was classy. Um, the, uh, the awards range everything from the Margolev Award for Education through the Patrick Award for Applied Sciences to Transformative Paper Awards, the Lindemann and the Martin, uh, and then a number of career staged awards, the Jens Schindler for Early Career, the Hutchinson for Mid-Career, and the Redfield for Cumulative or, or, or Overall Career. Um, and so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the, the uh, we're going to introduce each of the speakers and uh, let them talk about uh, some, of their, uh, some of their achievements. If I could have the, uh, the slide for the uh, uh, Stanley Dodson and Markalev, please. There we go. Um, so the first award is the Ramon Margalev Award for Excellence in Education in Oceanography and Limnology. Uh, it's the, actually the 10th anniversary of Ramon's death on Friday, so this is a particularly auspicious award. Um, today's um, uh, awardee, Stanley Dodson, is probably one of the most loved limnologists on the planet. Uh, you probably know that he, he, he passed. Uh, recently as a result of a, of a biking accident, but I met Stanley in, in Madison, Wisconsin, and he, he just he had an influence on everybody, and he just lit up everybody's life. So I was asking people about, well, what do you know about Stanley, about how he taught? I'm way off t text here, but anyway. One person said, well, he handed around a jar and asked us to feel the plankton. Peculiar, but yes, I, and he just, oh yeah, mm hmm Daphnia, right, copepods, good. Uh, and, and then another person said, well, he put on this big foam hat of a Daphnia retrocurva head and hopped around the room telling us how zooplankton were called water fleas and what that meant. And so this is the sort of level that Stanley could take absolutely top-end science and make it utterly accessible to just about anybody. Um, his achievements are, are, are profound. He spent nearly 40 years as a professor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and he, he really transformed the lives of virtually everybody he met. That includes dozens of PhD and master's students, postdocs such as me, where I was working on sediment, and I said, oh God, the sediments don't record rotifers. What, what am I gonna do? It's an important part of the food. He goes, ah, don't worry, the copepods don't care. They're like popcorn, you eat as many as you want, and nobody gets full. So, so Stanley had this really great, you know, charismatic way of ch transforming how science was uh, transmitted to the public and, and, and how our, our, our uh, educational system worked. So uh, because uh, Stanley can't receive the award, uh, fortunately his, the love of his life, uh, Ginny Dodson, is here and she's going to uh, receive the award on behalf of Stanley. So if we can have the first slide for, for uh, Stanley's talk. Um, what uh, Ginny's going to do is say a few words about Stanley and then Barbie Pekarsky is going to uh, tell us a little bit about Stanley's achievements. So if you can join me in, in uh, honoring Stanley Dodson for the 2014 Ramon Margalef Award. Well, I'm just so pleased to be able to be here today and accept the Ramon Margalef Award for Distinguished Education on behalf of Stanley. He would have been extremely proud to receive this honor, and I know that he is with us in spirit, smiling. Several members of his family besides me are here today. 
uh, and I'd like to introduce them briefly, his daughter, Sarah Wilson, and his sisters, Sarah Martin and April Dodson, and his niece, Megan Martin. Bobby Pekarski will discuss the impact of Stanley's teaching from the point of view of a student and a colleague. I'd like to share a few thoughts about Stanley as a teacher from a different perspective, a kind of behind the scenes view of someone who watched him develop his teaching philosophy over the years. Three things in particular seem to me to be important components of Stanley's unique teaching approach. First, he strongly believed that people need to interact with the natural world in order to develop an appreciation and an understanding of it. The challenge of making this happen in the large lecture format engaged him over his entire career. He came up with many creative ways to engage the students in hands-on activities, even in large lecture courses. In his introductory ecology class for non-majors, he developed a phenology project. Students were required to sit and observe the same chunk of the natural world over time. The site was chosen by the individual student and was visited in late January, early March, and late April. Students were invited to observe and record what they saw. Since the University of Wisconsin is in the great frozen north, in order for the students to identify the trees and shrubs at their site, they had to learn how to identify trees without any leaves. Stanley created a very usable winter tree and shrub key. He was a very gifted taxonomist, as many of you know, for the students. And I remember helping him collect hundreds and hundreds of twigs of various species so the students could all practice identifying winter trees in class. And the lecture room uh, looked very uh, disheveled when, we, when he was done with that class. There were a, there were a lot of twigs and branches uh, on the floor. I'm sure the next class was wondered what was going on. <laughs> In his, summer in his summer limnology class, students were urged to immerse themselves literally in their studies. Class always included swim time and personal experience of the thermal climb. No one was allowed to have dry feet. In the words of former graduate student and TA Jamie Galuli, Stan never lost sight of just making things fun. In these same summer field trips on our limnology boat, after sampling, we would also drive out to the middle of the lake and all jump in Lake Mendota for a swim. This was, of course, against all rules and used to make the administrators go crazy, but it was so special. Stan was always one of the first to hurl himself off the bow of the limnos, and all the students quickly followed. When we got back on the boat, the students were just glowing. This was more than just a swim. It was a special bonding moment for the class. We returned to the docks feeling great and having learned a bunch of limnology. Secondly, Stanley believed passionately in the importance of the citizen scientist. Important decisions regarding the fate of the natural world, such as water quality, deforestation, and the effect of toxic chemicals, are being made by non-scientists through their political process every day. We need an informed citizenry who understands the value and the complexity of the natural world and its processes. Stanley greatly enjoyed the service learning course he developed. This was a semester-long directed study project working with local nonprofits that were ecologically or biologically based, such as our local zoo, the Elbrick Botanical Garden in Madison, the Humanist Society, Audubon Society, and other organizations. 
students gained real-world experience of how biological knowledge intersects with the political process in a very real and hands-on way. His summer limnology course included a variety of undergraduates and high school teachers, as well as graduate students. In the word of Matt Brewer, one of Stanley's former students, Stanley was very keen on imparting to students exactly how science and limnology are done in practice. I'm not sure how many limnologists were born in that lab, but it definitely turned out students who knew what it meant to be an experimental scientist and a field limnologist, and that in itself was an accomplishment worth celebrating. Thirdly, Stan had in a tremendous capacity to learn new things. He was able to take ideas from outside his own discipline and outside academia itself to improve his teaching. A notable example of this is Stanley's adoption of the principles in the book Beyond PowerPoint by Cliff Atkinson. The author is a consultant to Fortune 500 companies and helps them make powerful presentations. He coached the group of lawyers who won the $253 million verdict for the plaintiff in the first Vioxx trial in 2005. The Beyond PowerPoint approach is graphic and cinematic. The outline of each talk is created as a storyboard, one idea per slide. Each idea is supported by graphics. Stanley adopted the Beyond PowerPoint techniques for his own lectures, and he urged his graduate students to adopt them for their presentations on their thesis research. The results were dramatic and positive. Desired job offers. So these three things, the importance of learning by interacting with nature directly, the contribution of the citizen scientist, and the ability to continue to learn and take good ideas from wherever you can find them are central to understanding who Stanley Dodson was as a teacher. Like nature itself, however, Stanley was amazingly complex. Had he lived, I'm sure he would have come up with even more creative and innovative ways to teach and inspire us. So thank you very much for awarding Stanley the Margalef Award. Thank you. Bobby Parkarski is now going to say a few words about Stanley's educational approach. I need the PowerPoint. Uh, yep. Yeah. Could we have the part? Oh, this is it here. All right. Could we, uh, could we have the PowerPoint for uh, the Dodson presentation? Or, uh, uh, Stanley, Stanley Margalev tribute. See it on the screen, but we can't, can't see it on the. Okay, we're good. John. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. So Ginny and I decided that the most important thing we could do today is to try to capture who Stanley Dodson was as an educator, which, as you've already heard, is not a simple feat. And most of you probably knew him best as uh, having done really seminal research in zooplankton. Uh, ecology and published lots of really influential papers. But as Ginny mentioned, and I'll reiterate, we think that the, that the part of his career that he was the most proud of was his teaching and his educational um, endeavors. Uh, we, a whole bunch of us at the University of Wisconsin and around that were former students and colleagues of Stan, 
um, nominated him for this award, and we were absolutely thrilled that he was chosen to receive it. And only a couple of us are here at the meetings, but I'm going to try to impart a few more things about Stanley's influence on so many of us from the perspective of having been one of his students. But I'm also going to include some of the comments that were written in the letters from the other nominators. And this is a comment from John Havel, who is also another student of Stanley's. And he said that Stanley was an imaginative and gentle teacher with an ever-present smile and an easy laugh, as has been uh, shown and will be shown in all of these pictures. And that his commitment to education and to teaching, his approach, went way beyond uh, traditional boundaries. One of the things that he did besides what Ginny already told you was that he got involved in K through 12 education with Robert Bohannon, who is a University of Wisconsin Extension person. And I think Randy Fuller this morning in the plenary said that if you want to reach generations of students, teach teachers. And that's exactly what Stanley did. He had a graduate level class for high school or for public school, K through 12 teachers, and using the um, concepts of his both ecology and limnology classes to reach um, countless generations of ecologists, uh, of students. And in also so doing, in his three textbooks, one of which he wrote and two others he edited, uh, will have a lasting effect on many generations of students. And this is a really cool quote from John Magnuson, who, uh, as most of you know, is a limnologist of great um, stature. And he, uh, of Stanley's limnology textbook, said that his introductory limnology book was written with the clarity and simplicity of a scientist who knew the material and a communicator who knew the audience. He also paid special attention to societal issues and application in his textbooks and also permeated through his books is his love of the discipline. So what I want to do next is talk about Stanley's teaching from the perspective of students. And I first met Stan and Ginny at the Rocky Mountain Biological Lab in 1974 where he taught, where they taught an aquatic ecology class. And it was a life-changing experience for me, totally transformed my life. I was a high school teacher at the time. And we were immersed completely in the natural surroundings. Uh, nature was our classroom. Uh, everything was project oriented and the students took responsibility for their own discovery. And we learned, as uh, Ginny mentioned already, exactly how science is done. And that stimulated me to go back to graduate school and, you know, the rest is history. So this uh, interaction with both Stanley and Ginny transformed my life. He also taught in the summers, many of us just do research in the summers, Stanley taught. He either taught limnology at Wisconsin or at many other field stations, including Trout Lake, Flathead Lake, Experimental Lakes. And um, Alan Kovich, who was one of the people who wrote letters for him, said that when he co-taught with Stanley at Flathead Lake, that Stanley was a mentor to him in terms of how to teach limnology. So that is another influence, teaching teachers. The most uh, sort of maybe infamous thing or the most kind of daring thing I think that Stanley did was that he was absolutely not a conventional classroom teacher at UW. First of all, he felt strongly that if you're going to teach ecology, go outside. And so that was probably one of the reasons he did so much teaching at field stations and he taught summer limnology because he could take students outside. One of his TAs, I think it was, um, Jamie Galuli said he was the only person she ever knew who could bring up, dredge up a, a bucket of muck from the bottom of Lake Mendota and convince everybody that it was really cool. And so this was this sort of hands-on experience with your subject matter. But his classroom teaching was actually totally outside the box. And, um, and actually Peter just mentioned that he was not shy about doing demonstrations about, say, Daphnia feeding behavior or life at low Reynolds numbers. And one of his most infamous of all of his um, experiential outside the classroom experiences was the infamous Tai Chi cranes. What Stanley would do is he'd take a class of like 150 ecology students and he'd drag them outside onto, um, 
on to Bascom Hill outside of Burge Hall, and he invited a Tai Chi instructor. So I need my Tai Chi instructor up here, Jeannie. And uh, what happened was I tried desperately to photo document this thing. Nobody has pictures of it. So we decided that in lieu of having an actual photo documentation of the Tai Chi crane walk demonstration in preparation for a field trip to the um, International Crane Foundation that we're just gonna do it, okay? Is everybody there? All right, this is for Stanley. So Jenny is gonna demonstrate, and everybody get up. Get in the aisles, I'm putting on my Stanley Dotson T-shirt, impeccable laboratory of biology, of, of ecology. And so this is in preparation for going to the Crane Foundation. Yep. And uh, I should say that this, uh, the Tai Chi cranes are, are very old Qigong exercises that have been around more than 2,000 years and were developed by a, a Tai Chi physician uh, as a way of promoting health and longevity. And he felt by studying the animals and mimicking their natural movements, people could uh, gain the qualities that these animals embodied. So for the cranes, <laughs> the cranes are large, very large birds, and you think they'd be clumsy. They're so graceful in the air. So the cranes are very light and airy, and so we're going to get that very light and airy feeling. And we're going to just glide effortlessly through the air. So we'll start. <laughs> Awesome, 100% participation. See what it does? You'll never forget that. It's this experience you'll never forget. So in, this is an interesting ex example of how Stanley's teaching philosophy, you involve the whole person, and not just the intellect, and you intersect with your daily lives. And he, he humanized teaching. Many of his students have, have said that in letters that they have written. He treated, always treated students with great respect. And, and as Ginny already said, science had to be fun. 
So the last thing I want to do is talk about Stanley as a mentor. I was one of Stanley's first graduate students, and there's a bunch of us in here. Raise your hands if you were a Stanley Dotson graduate student. Yay, there's a bunch of people who are here. And uh, he mentored uh, almost 50 masters and PhD students and many undergraduates and postdocs. And he fundamentally shaped our approaches to teaching science and life. And I'm going to end with the many lessons that Stanley taught us as graduate students that go well beyond just teaching and, and research and science. Uh, he gave a talk at uh, his retirement party uh, called Widening Ripples. And I think this is an excellent example that this is his career, he envisioned his career as a series of widening ripples, and widening ripples were people. And so we were her students, we have students, our students' students are gonna have students, and all of the Stanley Dots and disciples and the fundamental uh, uh, care and concern for our lives that he instilled in us will go on. So here's the most important lessons that we learned uh, from Stanley. This was like many zillion years ago when I graduated from the University of Wisconsin, 1979. We were pretty young then. All right, first of all, there's no hierarchy. That students, I mean, listen to this, Jasmine, that students and very famous scientists are all just as likely to have brilliant ideas. There's no hierarchy. In fact, students may be more, their brains may be more open to having cool ideas because they're not kind of, funneled into having read too much and thinking they have to do what everybody else did. That everyone needs to trust their observations, even if they're not what uh, anyone would have expected would happen. And that if you get an answer of no, if you ask a question, the answer is no, that's a good answer. It's a better answer than maybe perhaps or sometimes. And it is actually indicative that we need to learn something new. There's, I was very um, encouraged today to hear a bunch of talks where people were doing this. They're embracing counterintuitive results, unexpected results. Stanley was like the champion of unexpected results. That's the coolest thing that can happen is that you get something that's counterintuitive because the challenge then is to figure out why. And that's how we learn and grow and science moves forward. And so you need to challenge existing dogma and make new dogma. Make your observations a new dogma. Stanley taught us to use very simple experimental designs to answer complex questions, and that the benefits of coming closer to the truth outweigh the costs of taking too much time to get there. Put family before science. Everyone who knows me knows this is a huge part of who I am, and it's who I am because of Stanley. And this is Stanley's family. There's little baby Sarah, who's back here now, a grown up. When she was a tiny baby is when I met her at the Rocky Mountain Biological Lab. And lie on your belly beside a stream. Stand on your head on the tops of mountains. Anyone who's done the Stanley Dotson Rocky Mountain High,